the whys and why nots of tracking your calories. You gotta be so good that they can't ignore you, especially the ones that ain't done shit for you. Yeah, you know exactly what I mean. They stab you in the back and then they ask why you're bleeding. My name's Alan Roberts. This is Every Damn Day Fitness. Like, subscribe, and click the little notification bell over here. Click that shit. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, motherfuckers. So, today I want to talk about the whys and why nots of tracking your calories. And the answer is yes. Why you should and why you shouldn't. So, uh, basically, uh, there's two different trains of thoughts. If you're already at a lean state, if you're a male and you're already at a lean state, like 15% or so below, depending up or down, depending on, uh, you know, uh, depending on your body makeup, your muscle insertions, your muscle origins, your bellies, your muscle bellies, everything like that, how your genetics look. If you're already at 15% or around there and you can see weekly changes in your body, whether you've gained a little bit of weight or lost a little bit of weight and you're realistic with yourself, you, you might not need to. If you're not in some sort of serious athletic training, some serious athletic endeavor where you need to guarantee your micros and macros in order to uh, either you know, elicit growth or uh, try to get a little leaner or you know make sure that you're getting the proper nutrients in for proper recovery, you might not need to. It sounds like you already have good healthy habits, so if you've maintained that type of leanness for a long period of time, you may not need to track your calories. You may not. You know, that, that's that's just my opinion. I still do, uh, just because I wanna make sure I'm getting you know the proper nutrients I need for recovery, but I work out a lot too, so. Uh, so is it absolutely necessary for people in that state? Probably not. Still, should they? Absolutely. However, the people that absolutely should, in my opinion, track their calories. If you're at 20% body fat or higher for a male, you really should track your calories. And here's why. When I was over 20%, I couldn't see weekly changes. I just couldn't. I couldn't see daily changes. Uh, I couldn't, you know, shit, there would be several weeks past I wouldn't, I thought I looked this fucking same. That's how people get obese. Uh, they don't see the changes week to week that happen. They could gain a pound or two in a week, not really notice, and they just fucking keep going on and keep going on because they're making unhealthy choices. So should you track your calories if you're trying to lose weight if you're above 20 percent body fat absolutely because you obviously don't make very good health choices you obviously don't make very good nutrition choices or you wouldn't have gotten to that stage so uh if you're trying to lose weight and you're over 20 percent body fat you absolutely should track your calories now you should also take it with a grain of salt and here's why here's how calorie counters work now i use chronometer there's also my fitness pal and fat secret and all sorts of other good ones that people can use uh, they're normally free but they're all normally based upon this method First, they figure out your base metabolic level, your BMR. So your base metabolic level is, uh, or base metabolic rate, whatever you want to fucking call it, is figured out by using either two equations, normally, the St. Jor or the Harris-Bennett method. And they're equations that dietitians have used forever uh, to determine a person's base metabolic rate. They're based off your age, sex, height, and weight. That's it. Um, and they're pretty accurate. They've been studied over and over and over again. They're even accurate within like 25 calories of each other most of the time. So your calorie counter is going to figure out your base metabolic rate using one of those two equations, and it's pretty fucking accurate. Now, where it gets fucked up, it, you know, the first place it gets fucked up, as I should say, is that it gets fucked up when they add the activity factor, which is just like this loose fucking guesstimate that people fucking guess on themselves. So basically, uh, if you're sedentary and laying in bed, they list off an activity factor of one, meaning they take your base metabolic level and they multiply it by one. And for those of you fucking geniuses that failed kindergarten math, that would still be the same fucking number. Um, and, and if you could not figure that out in your head, click this shit off, go, back to fucking class right fucking now anyway however uh if you're you, know, you have a little bit more activity like if you just sit at a desk and you're driving or like that you don't really have any other activity you don't work out or anything like that it's gonna be like 1.25 uh moderately active if you work out a couple times a week it's gonna be 1.5 all the way up to 1.9 which is somebody like me who works out at least you know probably you know twice a day uh or has a physically laborious job that sort of thing so they take your base metabolic level and they multiply it by 1.9 so basically if a person has a base metabolic level of 2,000 calories 2,000 calories and they're an activity factor of 1.9 they take their base metabolic level of 2,000, they times by 1.9, their total daily ener energy expenditure would be 3,800 calories. That's just how it works. Now, the problem with that is this. That's just a guesstimate that the person uses themselves to guess at their own activity level, and most people guesstimate a lot higher than what it actually fucking is, because they, they lie to themselves a little bit. But also, uh, one of the things that happens is it doesn't take into account several different factors. Uh, it doesn't take into uh, account the factors for... Uh, you know, basically the the type of exercise you do. So not all exercises are created the same and not all exercises have the same metabolic effect. High impact, you know, you know, intensity training will keep your body burning more calories longer. It's longer after you're done than other exercises such as list cardio, that sort of thing. So basically the harder you work out, your body burns calories even after you're done working out. 
and that, it doesn't take into factor that. None of the calorie counters do that. None of the activity levels do that. It doesn't take into the nature of thermo, the thermogenic nature of food. Like a lot of people believe that all the calories you take in are just used up in uh, you know in your body's function. Uh, you're making make energy for your body. That's not actually true. Normally, about 10% of everything that's put in your body uh, is burnt up making heat. Uh, and some foods generate more. They have a larger thermogenic uh, factor than other foods. So it doesn't take into that effect. So if you have a largely, you know, largely thermogenic diet, uh, that does make a slight difference. However, supplement companies have way overemphasized the thermogenic nature of food and thermogenic effect in order to try to sell thermogenic supplements, you fuckers. But um, it does have a minor factor and every little bit counts, right? So it doesn't take into the fact those two things. It also doesn't take into account uh, the fact that not every four ounce chicken breast is the same as another four ounce chicken breast. They could have different hydration values, different protein values, different sodium levels, that sort of thing. So when you put food into there, even though it's the same product sometimes, it might not be the same nutritional value exactly. So it is just kind of a fucking guesstimate. However, it is pretty close. Like I found, when I did mine, I did mine backwards. So it listed my uh, my level off when I was like 240. It listed my level off at somewhere around 4,200 calories for my activity level. What I found out, it was actually like around 4,400. And I had figured it out this way. I took the amount of weight I lost in a fucking week. And I knew I ate around 2,000 calories because just the different nature of food. But I averaged 2,000 calories for the day. I lost X amount of weight, weight in a week. I divided the number of <laughs> the number of pounds I lost. I multiplied it by 3,500 and divided it out into the days, and that's how I figured out my base metabolic rate, which was off by about 200 calories. But that's very, very understandable. That's pretty fucking close. The whole point was, I was still tracking my calories. So, while it's just a loose guesstimate, I highly, highly, highly suggest that if you're very serious about your weight loss and you're over 20% body fat, you absolutely track your fucking calories. My name's Alan Roberts. This is Every Damn Day Fitness. Like and subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram at Every Damn Day Fitness. Hit me up on Twitter at Every Damn Day Fitness. I'm also on Facebook at Every Damn Day Fitness. And I'm on the internet at Every Damn Day Fitness.net. God damn. <clears throat>